Hey guys, this is Brom Wispelway, uh, an Atlantic Fellow for Health Equity this year in the 2020 class. Um, I'm also a physician at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School, um, and I direct a community health uh, program in Palestinian refugee camps called Health for Palestine. Uh, I'm calling you from the uh, glorious uh, hospital call room. If you've ever wondered what they look like, this is kind of it. You've got your phone old bed, that's about all you need, and the computer, of course. Um, and, you know, everything really now has, has changed with COVID-19 uh, here on the front lines. Our hospital now has, you know, over 150 COVID patients, um, about half of whom are in the ICU, really changed the structure of the whole way our hospital is running. In Palestine, our community health workers are working on uh, prevention efforts and ensuring their patients have really everything they need uh, while they're under a lockdown in the West Bank. So, you know, medications, food, um, pretty much pretty much everything. Um, there's been a lot of inspiring stories and also a lot of sad stories here on the front line. I had two patients this week who um, were survivors or are survivors of COVID, um, but had partners who got sick at the same time, you know, long-standing partners of decades uh, who didn't make it. And just, you know, hearing, um, you know, them talk about that experience and sort of, you know, uh, the grief that comes with that has, has been just one of the many difficult things about this time. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, hearing about their relationships and the love that kept them together through through all these years has also been been very meaningful. Um, at a societal level, you know, it's been a time of explosive quantification of our health inequities by by race and class. Um, you know, probably a lot of you guys know this, but Black Americans are dying in most cities that have released data at two to three times. Um, the percentages uh, at which they make up population in, in those places. Um, so significant inequity, inequities in mortality by, by race that we're seeing here in the U.S. Um, in our city of Boston, Latinx patients are making up a disproportionate um, uh, a number of the people we're seeing in the hospital right now um, compared to their overall kind of makeup of this city. So, you know, it's really an exacerbation and exposing a lot of a lot of these underlying historical and structural inequities and racism that we have in, in U.S. society in a particularly tragic way and in a way that I hope leads to some significant mobilization. Um, but we're all seeing, so seeing, you know, community health, uh, you know, our health workers and community members that are really banding together to make change. I've been part of groups that are working to get prisoners released. We've had some, you know, some moderate success there uh, to keep them uh, safe um, from these, you know, crowded environments in prison. Um, so those kind of abolition efforts um, and really making progressive uh, demands for economic change uh, during this time to keep, keep people afloat uh, when they can't work are particularly vulnerable. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to grieve, but there's also a lot that I'm inspired by and, and, and hopeful about right now um, as we try to tackle this and, and kind of bring it under control.